Homo economicus, the conception of humans as completely self-interested beings who are also totally rational and objective. Intuitively, it makes a lot of sense. You need things like food and shelter, and understand you can only acquire said things if you have enough money, so you get a job. Identify goals, identify actions to meet said goals, act, and repeat. It's easy to see why this idea can shape so much of the way we see human behavior, especially when it comes to money. But it's becoming increasingly apparent that this way of viewing people might not exactly be the most tenable. Case in point, take a simple item like a coffee mug. Give it to a group of people, let's call them the sellers, and ask them how much money they'd accept to sell the coffee mug. Take another group of people, let's call them the buyers, and don't give them the coffee mug, but ask them how much they would pay to buy it. You would imagine that completely irrational people would come up with more or less the same price for both situations. After all, it is the same coffee mug. It doesn't change in any way when someone gives it to you. But that doesn't exactly match the behavior observed in real people. Sellers routinely ask for twice as much in exchange for the coffee mug as buyers are willing to pay. And it's not that buyers and sellers are fundamentally different people. No matter who you give the cup to, you're bound to get similar results. Which leaves us to say that our assessment of the cup varies based on our relationship to it. We don't really seem to care much about the mug until it's ours. And this is precisely what the endowment effect entails. The simple fact that we own an object seems to make it more valuable to us. There are a couple of explanations for this phenomenon. The most prominent basis lies in the idea of a loss aversion, our tendency to evaluate gains much less strongly than losses that are equal in magnitude. According to this framework, the prospect of selling or losing the mug has a stronger influence on our decision making than purchasing or gaining the mug. This discrepancy manifests itself in the different prices. But this phenomenon can also be explained in a different way, according to the mere ownership effect. Let's repeat the coffee mug experiment from earlier, but this time let's hand a mug to the buyers too. It's not theirs to keep or sell or use, but it'll be nearby when they're asked how much they'd pay for it. When this happens, buyers are willing to pay a lot more for the mug. And when you take the mug away from both people, sellers are willing to pay a lot less to keep the mug. When we compare the new values now, we see that the price doesn't differ as much between buyers and sellers as they do between people with the object and people without it. So it's not the legal ability to sell or buy an object that causes the endowment effect, but rather the subjective feeling that an object is yours when you're, say, holding it in your hands, regardless of whether or not it actually is. But whatever the explanation, the endowment effect has been replicated in study after study, and has some very tangible consequences. Some of the more obvious scenarios are in contract bargaining or portfolio investments, where people may tend to be more illogical in their demands or investments than one might predict. But this psychological quirk also applies to more mundane scenarios. Fantasy football players, for instance, are more likely to overestimate the worth of players they've drafted, and undervalue other players. And a slightly less obvious, but perhaps more surprising implication is for shopping. Fitting rooms, free trials, and samples can increase our valuation of the worth of things like clothes, shoes, and food, making us more likely to pay higher amounts for these items. All in all though, the endowment effect is further evidence for the idea that humans are unfortunately not the perfectly rational beings we were once thought to be. So perhaps it's time to start thinking about people in a new light. <laughs>